Wild boars are known for their wildness and ferocity, and they'd often harm the ecosystem of forests and farms. Measures to deal with wild boars have been introduced in this video. We will learn how to use wild boar traps most effectively. Please leave number 2 if you are excited about this content. Agricultural fields are always ideal targets for wild boars when they search for food. Whether the field is waiting to be harvested or is being harvested, agricultural crops falling to the ground are a delicious bait that wild boars cannot resist. They follow their currents in search of food throughout these areas. In the fields, seeing wild boar is not difficult. They often appear in the middle of fields and are easily recognizable with their strong appearance and characteristic colored feathers. However, getting close to wild boars is dangerous and should be avoided. You need to remember that although there are measures in place to deal with wild boars, they are still not completely under control. Some herds are still able to escape and roam around the forest. Wild boars are intelligent animals and easily adapt to their living environment. The forest ecosystem is diverse and rich, providing many food sources for them, from plants, fruit seeds to fast reproducing insects. The big problem is the rapid increase in wild boar numbers with millions of them appearing in a year, causing the risk of spread and great damage to forest ecosystems. This creates a major challenge in controlling and managing wild boar populations, requiring close cooperation between authorities, communities, and environmentalists. Experts have invented many different types of traps, but not all are effective in controlling wild boars. Some traps are made from small pieces pieced together to form a tight pattern often made of high-strength steel for durability and safety. Camera systems are also used to remotely monitor trap activity and attract wild boars with bait. A cage is designed to attract them, and when they feel safe, they will invite others to join. When there are enough, traps will be activated to capture them.
Each catch can catch from 1 to 5 pigs, and then the trap will be prepared for the next catch. At night, wild boars will search for food more vigorously. Observe them as they advance into the trap, guided by the scent of bait. Nighttime hog trapping is a good choice because in high temperatures, they can experience heat stress and have less ability to forage. It is estimated that the number of wild hogs trapped at night is double or triple that of during the day. These nighttime traps typically yield more catches by morning. Each trap will be placed in one location for three to five days before moving to another area. A large trap can catch up to 38 wild boars. It's time we discuss creating a larger trap if you want to catch a larger quantity of wild boars at once. The way the shields are put together is done in a sturdy way to withstand the power of many pigs at the same time. It should be noted that with a larger trap like this, you will need more enticing bait to attract wild boars compared to a smaller trap. Once the trap is baited, experts will monitor via cameras to determine the ideal timing to trigger the trap. When the trap door closes, the wild boars will attempt to find a way to escape with significant force. The number of wild boars caught in this trap will then be processed into expensive dishes. Although wild boar meat is quite expensive, before consumption, it's essential to understand the proper processing methods. Feral pigs have spread from 30 to 50 states in the United States, especially in Texas, where they have recently caused extensive damage to crops and farms. Their presence seriously affects the agriculture of Texas, the state with the largest population in the United States. There are an estimated 3.5 to 4 million wild boars, more than half of the species' total population in the United States. The special thing is that they start to reproduce when they are only six months old. Each time they can give birth to 10 to 15 young, causing huge losses to the agricultural industry, up to $7 billion per year. High adaptation and diverse diets have created great challenges in managing and controlling wild boar populations. The booming wild boar population in Texas is posing a serious threat to the corn industry. The estimated annual losses caused by wild boars amount to 20% for the agricultural sector. 
reducing the productivity and income of local farmers. They'd often inhabit cornfields and wreak havoc on crops, causing damage to the agricultural economy. At the same time, they also pose a threat by encroaching into wooded areas and seeking food sources, creating increasing pressure on farmers. This requires close cooperation between government agencies and farmers to identify effective control measures and protect Texas agricultural resources. Texas farmers have opted to use boughs to deal with the invasion of wild boars, and the results have been quite positive. with a significant increase in the number of wild boars. They have implemented a hunting plan to control the situation. Every time they venture into the forest, they prepare meticulously, bringing along their bows, bowstrings, and necessary tools such as knives and bait. They need to have accurate hunting skills to avoid danger and effectively take down the wild boar herds. The accurate aiming range is about 20 to 30 feet, sufficient to inflict quick damage and neutralize the target. Hunters have demonstrated patience and effort to become proficient in using bows, and this technique has yielded promising results. Hunting wild boars with a spear is a fascinating and challenging activity. Hunters often utilize techniques such as boar traps and tree stands to attract and approach the boars. When the boars approach, hunters use the spear and tranquilizers to safely and effectively incapacitate them. The number of feral hog fights has decreased by 30% each year, helping to protect cornfields and reduce pressure on Texas farmers. This also helps stabilize the economy, creating the potential to increase Texas corn export turnover and increase reliability in corn product quality. Dealing with wild pigs requires facing many difficulties. Besides using bows and arrows to hunt, Texas farmers also use traps to control feral swine. However, 
Farmers in Texas have found a responsible and affordable solution by capturing them and transporting them to conservation areas instead of destroying them. Whenever trapped, wild pigs will be taken to sanctuaries such as the East Texas Sanctuary or the Sam Houston Sanctuary. There, they can live naturally without harming crops. To control effectively, new government measures could be applied, such as using satellite technology to monitor and predict areas where wild boars frequently roam, thus focusing control measures in these areas. They don't need to worry about being hunted anymore because control measures have been implemented. If possible, visit Texas to explore a wild pig sanctuary and observe them in the wild. agree with me that relocating them to a sanctuary is the best solution? If you agree, please leave a 1. Otherwise, leave a 0 and share your opinion in the comments below. Deer, being delicate wild creatures, are increasingly becoming a significant challenge in the United States, especially in agricultural and urban areas. Farmers and hunters are facing formidable challenges in addressing this growing problem. Facing economic losses and public safety issues caused by deer strikes on crops. The problem of deer invasion not only affects the economy and public security, but also poses many multidimensional problems that need attention. First, this organism can cause extensive damage to crops, livestock, and property, creating significant economic hardship for farmers and landowners. The total value of these losses has reached an alarming $1.5 billion by 2022, highlighting the need for measures to address the problem beyond just the economic aspect. Furthermore, deer encroachment also threatens public safety, especially on roads. Deer-related traffic accidents contribute to approximately 200,000 each year, not only as a safety issue, but also as a threat to society. Hunting is considered a practical and effective solution for controlling the deer population. During the 2020 hunting season, more than 6.3 million white-tailed deer were harvested in the United States, clearly demonstrating the effectiveness of this management strategy. Although hunting can provide many benefits, such as creating income opportunities and contributing to the economy, there are also challenges and concerns. Issues such as environmental pollution, biodiversity loss and public safety need to be managed responsibly and with practice to ensure that hunting remains a sound management tool.
collaboration between game farmers and wildlife management professionals is a key factor in addressing deer encroachment. Together, they can use new technology, such as animal tracking technology, to improve the effectiveness of deer control measures and minimize negative impacts on the environment and social communities. In this way, the combination of traditional hunting strategies and new technological advances can create a comprehensive and sustainable approach to solving the increasingly serious invasive deer problem in the United States. Conservation concerns are also a point of concern. Overhunting can put deer species in danger, posing a major challenge to biodiversity conservation. Performance controls need to be established to ensure that hunting does not have negative consequences for biodiversity. Impact on local communities is also an important aspect. Although deer hunting can bring income to some communities, it can also cause controversy with environmental conservation advocates. Information management and public education about the benefits and drawbacks of hunting are important. While deer hunting can be a useful means of population management, it is important to do it in a considered and sustainable manner. Performance control, environmental monitoring, and creating understanding within the community are decisive factors in ensuring that deer management meets both economic and environmental conservation needs. Use of live traps and tracking technology not only benefits research and conservation, but also helps reduce pressure and stress on deer as they are moved without causing pain or anxiety lost. This will not only improve the deer's quality of life, but will also promote progress in understanding the animal's behavior and biology. cannot survive near valuable or planned tree plantings that people are developing. To protect crops, people often build a variety of fences, including wooden fences, rope fences or other systems. This is to prevent deer from accessing and harming crops, protecting agriculture, and ensuring the sustainability of the ecosystem. Building a fence to prevent deer intrusion requires care to ensure its effectiveness and durability. It is important to determine the area that needs to be protected and planned specifically for the type of fence and its location. Construction material selection needs to be done carefully in accordance with the specific environment and budget. If deer are 
are capable of jumping high. The fence needs to be high enough to stop them. At the same time for its effectiveness, the fence needs to be periodically inspected and maintained to ensure it functions properly and is not damaged. This not only protects the farm or garden from deer destruction, but also keeps the ecological environment in that area maintained in balance. Fences not only prevent deer access to plants and trees, but also help protect the environment. Maintaining balance between humans and nature is important, helping us and deer coexist without hurting each other. In short, deer population management requires an integrated strategy. Combining traditional means, such as hunting and more advanced methods, such as the use of live traps and tracking technology. Close cooperation between farmers, hunters, and wildlife managers, along with community awareness, will play a decisive role in finding sustainable and safe solutions to this growing problem. This becomes serious. After the farm owner transports the cows to the processing plant, the cows are hung on hooks to begin the processing process. The cow wide will be separated for production at another processing stage, and the cow's organs and head will be removed. Half of the carcass is then sent to cold storage for a day. Now, the important step is to check the beef for marbling, to measure the grain most accurately. Experts often measure the cut between the 12th and 13th ribs. After measuring the meat texture, half of the beef carcass will move to the next step. Each operation is performed skillfully and carefully. The bones are then removed, separating the meat from the ribs. This work is done using a knife and a special hook. This special factory produces 10,000 tons of meat per year, serving customer needs. The plant processes a variety of beef dishes, including seasoned meats, popular with American farmers. These processed meats offer convenience and their prices are relatively good, in line with the wages of American farmers. The plant is one of the largest beef processing plants in the United States where beef halves are meticulously inspected and labeled. Labeling is very important because only cuts of beef that meet meat quality standards are further processed and then delivered to consumers. Watching this video may help you feel more secure when buying and using beef cuts from the supermarket. Because all cuts of beef, regardless of price, go through a careful quality inspection process. Most of the work at this plant is performed using vertical flow systems and modern machinery. The pieces of beef are hung up and run through each stage, divided into equal parts by the worker using a machine. The beef portions are then ready for cooking. Workers use protective gear safely and meticulously in each processing step. The separated pieces of meat look very delicious. Each piece is packaged, labeled, and exported to supermarkets and stores.
Processing workers at American beef plants can earn salaries of up to $150,000 per year, with long-term employees even receiving higher salaries. If you want to work in such a processing plant, then it is a well-paying opportunity. Ground beef patties, commonly found in burgers, are also produced in large quantities at this plant. The method is very simple. The beef mixture, including lean meat and fat, is put into the machine and roasted evenly. Mechanical systems operate automatically without manual intervention. Every day, this factory can produce thousands of hamburgers. Hamburger is a popular processed food in America, often eaten for breakfast. Now let's discover more about pig farming in the United States. In 2023, the total number of pigs raised will be 72.9 million. The number of farms will increase by 2% compared to the previous year. Some pig farms are concentrated in states such as Iowa, Minnesota, and North Carolina. China has the largest pig population globally, with 449 million pigs, followed by the European Union with 142 million pigs. The United States ranks third globally in pig population. Popular pig breeds include Yorkshire, Duroc, Chester White, and Berkshire. Yorkshire pigs are most commonly recorded in North America, found in most states, with the largest populations in Illinois and Indiana. Iowa has the largest pig herd in the country, with about 23.4 million pigs distributed across 5,400 farms. Minnesota has the second largest pig herd with 8.9 million animals. This video also covers the pig insemination process. If you are curious about how many burgers Americans consume each day, please comment number one below and share your thoughts. Stay tuned for more discoveries in the US. At a farm in Iowa, it takes 15 to 20 minutes to inseminate each pig. 
Each year, approximately 5 million piglets are born in the United States, approximately 1.5% of, which will die shortly after birth, making reducing pre-feeding mortality a top priority for all piglets. Pig farms in the United States, at this farm, they will be fed exclusively with mother's milk for several months before being fed other foods. They will also be vaccinated regularly to help strengthen their immune system. When the piglets are three months old, they will be separated from their mother and fed food containing more nutrients. When they reach a weight of 40 to 50 pounds, the farmer will increase the fattening process to sell them to market. Normally, when pigs reach the age of six to eight months, they have enough weight in standards to be sent to the processing plant. Female pigs weighing about 250 pounds typically breed about twice a year and can give birth to 10 to 15 cubs at a time. There are farms with smart business strategies, keeping capital and making money by selling breeds to other pig farms. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, each year about 97 million tons of corn and 38 million tons of soybeans are used to feed about 72.6 million pigs. Pig farming is concentrated in states with large corn production, and this form gradually disappears. Water also estimates that the number of pigs raised and processed organically is decreasing, with most farms switching to providing nutritious food. Farms are divided into areas that are easy to manage, maintain, and care for pigs. Pig barns use more spacious space for pigs and machinery to monitor pigs 24-7 to ensure safety and early detection when pigs are sick or show unusual signs. Every week, farmers will place dry straw in the barn to reduce moisture from pig manure and urine, helping to keep the pigs dry, not only helping them stay warm, but also keeping the pig's body temperature stable in cold weather. Wastewater from a pig farm with more than 4,000 pigs in eastern Nebraska is treated under a modern system. Wastewater is treated not only to irrigate corn and soybean crops on the farm, but also into a sump to produce methane gas. Large-scale pig farming does not appear often in the United States today. There are currently approximately 28,075 processing plants in the United States with an average of approximately 1,100 pigs processed per hour across the United States. When arriving at the processing plant, the pigs will be degassed with CO2 before moving on to the next stage. In general, a pork processing plant can be divided into three areas, slaughter, cutting, and packaging. When arriving at the processing plant, the pigs will be degassed with CO2 before moving on to the next stage. In general, a pork processing plant can be divided into three areas, slaughter, cutting, and packaging.
the poultry industry in California is at the top in numbers in revenue, with about 300 million chickens. This state is one of the largest chicken producers in the United States. Farmers often own farms that are modernly designed to ensure hygiene, resistance, and good care for chickens. Technology is often applied to monitor chicken health, intelligently manage nutrition, and create better living conditions for chickens. Chickens are raised on nutrient-rich feed, designed based on scientific data and research to ensure the chickens are well cared for hygienic and free of disease risk. In addition, there are also chicken farms that allow them to roam freely on grass fields for a period of time. They are raised with organic food and some agricultural products. This is one of the rare farms. However, the annual revenue from such chicken farms is about 7% of that of modern farms. The quality of chicken from such farms is always more expensive than chicken from closed farms. Thanks to this model, they earn more than $10 billion annually from the poultry industry. Chickens in California are not only well cared for for their health, but are also raised with smart and reasonable feed, helping to improve meat quality. Some farms even allow chickens to roam free on pastures for a period of time, feeding them organic feed and agricultural products. Although this is a rare method, the quality of chicken from such farms is considered excellent and commands a higher price than conventionally raised chicken. California places a strong focus on maintaining high standards in the poultry and dairy industries. In the poultry sector, the state leads in both quantity and revenue, possessing about 300 million chickens. These chickens are raised on modern, well-designed farms where technology is applied to monitor their health, intelligently manage their nutrition, and provide optimal living conditions. In the dairy industry, California maintains a significant presence with more than 1.7 million dairy cows. Farmers and dairy farm owners utilize technology to monitor the health and resilience of cows, ensuring their healthy growth. Modern herd management technology is used to enhance productivity and milk quality. Feeding robots are used to deliver food at predetermined intervals, minimizing the need for manual labor. California dairy cows are fed nutrient-rich diets designed based on scientific research and data. This not only promotes the health and strength of dairy cows, but also improves milk quality, ensuring consumers receive a premium product. The state's dairy industry generates significant revenue, exceeding $20 billion each year. Strict management and control systems are applied to ensure that milk produced always meets high food safety standards. This commitment to quality and technology contributes to the stability and sustainability of California's poultry and dairy industries. Automated cleaning robot models help maintain cleanliness in the barns. This model has improved beef quality and increased productivity, while ensuring the herds off resistance to disease. Beef cattle in California are raised on modern farms carefully applying resistance technology. Farmers also use smart nutrition systems to ensure that cows always have the right feed, helping them grow healthy and have delicious meat that meets high standards. Farm owners use an automatic milk frother system. The entire machine is like a robot that does not require human control. The beef cattle industry in California is growing strongly with more than 5 million cows. Farmers earn more than $13 billion each year from beef production. They own farms that specialize in raising beef cattle, providing nutritious and suitable feed to help them grow healthy and have delicious meat that meets high standards.
California not only raises chickens but also many other types of poultry, such as geese and ducks. These types of poultry also contribute significantly to the state's livestock industry, generating more than $2 billion in annual revenue. Poultry in California varies in type and quality. Farmers have leveraged technology to improve management and care for each type of poultry, ensuring they contribute effectively to the state's agricultural economy. As you can see, California is not only a state famous for its sun and sea, but also an important agricultural center. The combination of tradition and modern livestock technology has helped California farmers earn more than $67 billion a year from the livestock industry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Since we don't know about the difficulties you might be facing on your farm, please don't forget to share the problems and difficulties you are going through. This will help us a lot for upcoming videos.